Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar on useful t testing, a game changer to customer experience by Switch Systems. Myself, Lena Susan John, Head of Marketing at Switch Systems, will be the host for the day. We hope that uh, you all and your families are safe amidst the tough times that we are going through during this pandemic. I, on behalf of the entire Zushians, thank you all for the time you have dedicated today to attend this webinar. So uh, here are some webinar housekeeping rules. Uh, be sure your audio is connected properly. Uh, all the participants' lines are muted. If you have any question during the presentation, type it into the chat box. Uh, we'll be logging all the questions and answering them at the end of the webinar session during the uh, Q&A. The agenda for the day will look like this. Our speaker will first take you through how your software or applications can get hurt in various aspects with the lack of UX testing and how UI and UX differs. We'll then move on to look at how to integrate UI and UX testing process into the software development lifecycle. What are the various types of testing as well as the tools that you can consider to be incorporated during the process? Finally, we'll move on to see how to create a user journey map, a key factor in usability testing, and last but not the least, a quick to use checklist for you as a tester to ensure your users are getting a flawless user experience. With us, let me introduce our speaker for the day, Sujata Sivamaran. She's the head of quality engineering at uh, Zuji Systems and takes close to two decades of experience with her in software testing. She specializes in test automation, performance testing, and has managed end-to-end -end quality delivery in the various projects she has handled. She has zero tolerance for erroneous codes. Now, uh, before handing it over to Sujata, here's a question that we have for all our audience. You have the poll on the screen. Do you perform user experience testing? If you have 20 seconds, please choose the right option and submit. While you're on this poll, I will hand over this session to Sujata. Over to you, Sujata. Thanks, Lini. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, hope you are having a great day. Uh, I uh, hope you all understand um, that uh, this session is being um, taken from home. So please pardon if there is any background disturbance. Um, let's uh, let's go with the webinar. Uh, Lini, is the poll over? Yeah, I'm going to close this now. Okay, awesome. And uh, here's the result. Okay. So um, from the poll results, it looks like uh, 50 per 57 percentage of them are actually taking uh, usability uh, testing um, as part of their uh, testing process. Uh, and 43% has said uh, they have not been considering it. So um, let's um, let's look at some of the um, uh, worst things happen to bigger brands uh, with respect to usability yeah. testing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Domino's, uh, the well-known pizza brand, had a law uh, lawsuits filed for them against their uh, website and. Uh, 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 mobile application uh, because visually impaired person was not able to order pizza through this um, application. Uh, so for any visual uh, impaired person, they used to uh, usually use screen readers to uh, navigate through the product and uh, do the actions they need. But clearly this was not considered by uh, Domino's website or the uh, mobile application, and hence a lawsuit was filed against it. 
similarly beyond's uh, website a uh, retail website was sued against violating american with disability act uh, american with disability act actually uh, takes care of uh, american uh, helping uh, Americans with uh, disabilities to actually use uh, technology uh, uh, internet staffs. So uh, this insists on it insists on having um, a alt text for the images to help visually impaired persons, uh, so that the screen readers can read it for them. Uh, proper captions uh, for any audio uh, and. Uh, uh you know user having option to choose the um, color contrast so that uh, if uh, color themes so that if they have any uh, color uh, uh, blindness also they should be able to handle but this was not handled in beyond's website and hence a lawsuit was filed against them similarly netflix uh, they were again sued for uh, sued by deaf rights group uh, for not having captions for the videos that they were streaming. So if a video is streamed without caption, a, um, a person with hearing difficulties will not able to enjoy the content. So it, it, it renders uh, nothing for them without a caption. So Netflix was sued against it they had to go back and uh, re, re upload all the content with proper captions uh, similarly accenture uh, uh, software vendor was sued by hertz uh, major car hire company for uh, developing a defective product for them so the major cost for this uh, uh, issue was when Accenture developed the product for them, it didn't consider for the uh, responsive UI. Uh, now that we are in the modern age of using internet in a variety of uh, devices, responsiveness, responsive UI design is playing a key role, uh, which was not uh, considered. So these are some of the examples of UI UX uh, testing when it is not taken care how bad it can hurt uh, so uh, it clearly says uh, we need ui ux testing before we actually reach out to our end customers okay so now that we know uh, we need ui ux testing actually what is ui ux uh, uh, I I have heard from different people interchangingly using uh, these words UI UX. It's, it's most confused and misused words. UI is uh, nothing but series of screens, pages, and visual elements that enables person to interact with a product or application. Whereas UX is on the other hand is the internal experience of a person when they are actually interacting with every aspect of the product or a service that a company provides so ui ux is clearly uh, a two different spheres it's like left and right brains but they have to go hand in hand uh, a ui without ux is like a painter you know, throwing colors on the canvas without thinking anything. Whereas a UX without UI is like serving a very delicious food on a table, which is very clumsy and clean. So both is not going to be appealing for the end user. So uh, what are the quality aspects of UI? What are the quality aspects of user experience? You can see it rightly on the screen. UI mostly concerns on the technology functional part. So simplicity, clarity, consistency, familiarity, responsiveness, efficiency, proper visual hierarchy are, are the major quality aspects of a proper UI. Whereas user experience looks from the feeling perspective. So how useful it is, how desirable, how accessible things are. Is it really credible? Is it findable? Is it usable? Overall, is it valuable for the end user? 
so now that we know ua and ux are two different parts but they have to go hand in hand for a, a customer to have a great experience uh, let's look at how this will be incorporated in a how this can be incorporated in the software development life cycle so um here we have a quick poll here uh, are you building usability efforts as part of your sdlc um, we'll have this poll for you know um, some 10 seconds Uh, I hope you can quickly answer. Okay. So the poll lines are closed. And yeah, uh, it's a 50 50. So people say that 50% people are already taking care of it, which is really good. And 50% of people say, uh, no, not we have cared about it much. Fine. Uh, so the general SDLC is like, plan, analyze the requirements, then design, again, move on to development, which takes the major chunk, and then test, deploy, and maintain. So in this STLC process, where does UI UX fit in? So UI UX uh, testing itself is not just going to happen on the testing phase. Uh, for the testing to properly happen uh, in the testing phase, Initially, on the uh, analysis stage itself, UI UX has to be considered. So here comes a UI uh, a consultant or engineer and UX consultant engineer to care to take care of the UI UX of the product. So in the analysis stage, a UX consultant will actually have to research on the types of users and have to research on the different personas who are going to use the product. So uh, it's not just the functionality uh, the product is going to serve. It's all about who are going to be the targeted users, what uh, age group is uh, will they be from, and what uh, demographics. Uh, all these things has to be considered and uh, analyzed. Based on this information in the dip, design phase information has to be designed interactions has to be designed uh, visual design also has to happen so visual design is more of ui part whereas information design is totally ux part so how the information has to be presented how the content has to be uh, uh, clearly uh, put out on the uh, website this is ux part Whereas interaction designing is a combination of UI and UX. So given the content, how the user is going to use it. So this both UI and UX has to work together to design this interaction design. So now that these designs are ready, we have to start the UI UX review or testing at this stage itself. Once this is finalized at this stage, development can happen and then we can move on to testing. So in the testing phase, we can have internal QA team to do the testing. And also at the latest stage, we can also bring in, we can also bring in uh, uh, end users, real end users to do the testing. Once the product is confirmed for the uh, requirements gathered and analyzed at the earlier stage, it can be deployed to the production. Once it is deployed to the production, it will move into the maintenance stage where uh, once the product is deployed also, we can collect inputs for uh, pertaining to usability. And uh, again, we can go back and uh, incorporate the gaps identified. So this is how we can incorporate UI UX on the standard STLC journey. Uh, moving on to the next slide, we can see some of the uh, usability testing that can happen. So uh, usability testing uh, is more on uh, conducted, 
with end users. On the screen, you can see uh, different uh, usability testing types. Uh, broadly, they are categorized as moderated and unmoderated. Uh, whereas moderated usability testing happens on the very early stage of the life cycle uh, when the product it has, is in a very nascent stage. Uh, unmoderated usability testing uh, generally can be taken at any point of the time. So, in moderated usability testing, uh, there are uh, uh, key usability testing like uh, lab usability testing and gorilla testing where you have the actual end users to uh, uh, take the questionnaires, use the product, and give you the feedback. Uh, in lab usability testing, it is done within the uh, company premises with defined set of uses and it is uh, clearly planned with what has to be done, what questions has to be taken to the end customers and uh, what are the kind of uh, uh, aspects we are looking at improving in terms of usability testing. Whereas Gorilla usability testing is like a, a doc one. Uh, you know, for example, I have developed a mobile application. I can just go to a coffee shop and, you know, uh, catch up with people over there, offer them a coffee, and in, uh, in return, I can ask them to, you know, uh, uh, you know, use my product and give me a feedback. So um, it would be as simple as that. So it doesn't require too much planning, but still to get a proper result, still you have to do some sort of plan. And card sorting again, uh, you get the end users, uh, uh, put out cards describing the features and functionalities uh, intended in your application and ask the user to group them according to their understanding. And you can question them what made them to uh, group them in a way that they have done and what they think about it. So based on that, you can really see how uh, end user is looking at. Phone interviews and uh, video interviews are more of interviews with the end users, uh, uh, giving them access to the product and asking them questions. So these are moderated usability testing, whereas unmoderated usability testing are more dependent on tools, uh, where uh, some of them are like vision recording, keystroke modeling, first click testing, eye tracking. So uh, these are all uh, more pertaining to how the end users are actually using the product. So uh, in session recording, uh, user navigating through a product is completely recorded end to end and uh, the session is completely analyzed by the UX engineer to understand how they are using the product and where they are finding difficulties, uh, hence identify the gap. Uh, similarly, keystroke is going to analyze the keystroke uh, collected uh, from the tool, and eye tracking is uh, will be using a special uh, device to uh, capture uh, users' retina movement and see which part of the application is actually. Um, uh, capturing their attention or distracting their attention uh, while they are working on some goals. And first click testing and uh, five second test are tests where uh, user are given some actions to do and uh, see how which one they click first, how they uh, which path they take, uh, and how quick they are able to do that. Uh, finally, A/B testing is more of like comparative testing where you know um, uh, it could be a comparison between uh, previous version and the current version of the product is compared with respect to usability or um, it could be a comparison between a product and its competition a competitor's product so uh, now that we have seen different uh, usability testing types uh, we can also look at different tools helping them so uh, in the different types of tools listed over here, you can see more tools are listed for unmoderated testing and very few for moderated testing. 
So there are a lot of tools uh, supporting unmoderated uh, usability testing. Uh, uh, Hardjar, the major uh, usability testing tool, supports session recording, five second test, eye tracking. Uh, Optimizely is another uh, major tool which you know uh, specializes in A/B testing and loopback uh, helps in session recording and phone interviews. So uh, uh, it's it's clear that uh, usability testing tools are more targeted uh, targeting on unmoderated testing. Uh, definitely, because unmoderated testings are uh, actually looking, uh, as I said earlier, looking at uh, in the later stage of the application development, whereas moderated testing is mostly done in the earlier stage of the product where a uh, very limited set of users are brought in and um, feedbacks are collected. So it happens more in person. So um, the need of tool is very less. But whereas once the product goes live or into beta testing, then we, we may not be able to reach out to the customers. It will be really very expensive to do and uh, take a lot of efforts. So the tool comes handy there. So now that we have seen uh, different tools helping it. Uh, we have a quick poll on what's the percentage of usability issues your customers find in your application? Um, uh, maybe less than one percentage of the total issues that is logged or greater than five, greater than 10. Let's have a few more seconds. Okay, so I know there are a lot of people saying more than 5% of usability issues are found by the actual customers, so, which will be really hurting because customer finding an uh, issue is always very costly and uh, especially usability issues are uh, pretty damaging and uh, it, it uh, the brand value goes for a toss. So, okay, now that we know the importance and uh, uh, we know the value of usability testing, how we can make it a game changer? How we can do it in a proper way? So, user journey is the answer here. So, uh, you should have a, a user journey jotted in the beginning of the life cycle where uh, the first step towards it is choosing the right persona. So when the application is, uh, when the requirements are planned, you should also look at uh, uh, user experience uh, consultant or the engineer should start looking at the personas who are going to use the product. And then you have to look at the stages the user will go through the product so the stages of the user journey should be mapped once you have the right persona and have created the stages then you have to look at and identify the actions and what will be the user's mindset and emotions when they are going through this journey so uh, for example uh, when uh, let's let's see. Uh, let's take a, a retail website. Uh, so the users may have different stages, like uh, only uh, you know exploring on the product displayed on the website. Uh, the next stage could be comparing the product and saving for later stage in the wish list, uh, and then could be a stage of you know ordering, and there could be a stage of returning or canceling the product. So all these can be identified as stages and in each of the stages uh, their actions and then mindsets and emotions may differ so uh, when a uh, when a user has ordered a product and then they want to cancel it their mindset will be entirely different from a user who is going to actually who's who's going to look at the um, placed orders just for the tracking purpose because he might be expecting it uh, for a delivery uh, sooner 
uh, maybe he may want to gift it to somebody else on time so the mindset totally differs when they are using it uh, hence the emotion changes and the action everything differs so all these has to be considered next comes the touch points and channels so okay i know the actions and mindsets i know the stages and how, i should also consider about how the actual users are going to use my product from where they are going to use and how they are going to connect with me so to cancel a product uh i will they be interested to call me and cancel or will they be interested to you know email me and cancel or will they be interested to cancel from the website itself from the order history so uh, will they be using a mobile to access my application or will they be doing it from their desktop so everything is going to matter so because we need to design accordingly and finally once we have identified all these things this will help us to look at the opportunities that we have in front of us and also barriers so the user journey when we are creating uh, these are the things that we have to take care of. and this is going to give us a very good elaborate idea of how users are going to actually use the product and how they are going to uh, see it and how valuable it is going to be for them so now that uh, we know we have identified uh, who will be our users and how they are going to use it how will we testing this so we need to have a clear checklist to test the usability so to test the usability what should be what components should be in your um, checklist so usability testing is more of you know um, feeling of the end users so it should more revolve around that point uh, the first thing that uh, one should look for is how much freedom does the user has they should feel that they have control on the product rather than the product you know controlling them to move in certain way so they should be able to order a product right from the search results or from their wish list or from the product details page they should have that freedom and control so the next thing would be there should be a match between the system and the real world um uh so ordering a product and checking out is one story uh, if there is a difference between the system and the real world then user will find it confusing when they are using it next next thing is visibility of system status okay so now i have uh, you know uh, for example let's understand uh, let's take an example of uh, uploading a file so when i am uploading a file if there is no indication of whether it has uploaded or not uh, uh, if the screen is frozen as an end user i will not have any clue whether it is stuck or it is actually working or not so there should be a clear visible clue to the user what is happening what stage is it how long maybe he has to wait so if there is a progress bar or if it is a, at least a, a, a spinner going there so they know that something is happening he has to wait then comes consistency and standards so uh, this is something that uh, we have to be keenly looking at because there should be a consistency between the uh, you know uh, things presented within a suit of product uh, and also there should be a standard follow for example yeah the very uh, very good example is um, american with disability act is a standard that any website targeting um, citizens of america should follow so something like this uh, has to be verified from usability perspective and then comes help and documentation so the next thing is help and documentation users should have clear uh, way to reach for uh, the help documentations so that they can 
achieve their goals. Uh, for example, a lot of products give uh, for the first time login people uh, first once the uh, first time sign in and use the product they give a tour on how to use the product um, even if there is a new feature rolled out they give a tour so this will help the end user to actually understand how they can use it and uh, what they have to do and clearly again here user should have uh, their option to dismiss that also because that's their freedom and then you should be able to recognize things rather than you know uh, recalling they should be able to recognize uh, you know uh, features uh, they should be able to easily identify things so uh, uh, x mark on the top right corner is always a close button so it's it's the standard thing and users should have the flexibility and the efficiency. They should, the system should be flexible uh, to give user to uh, user an option to move back and forth, you know, without restricting them. And uh, users should have that, uh, you know, flexibility because sometimes uh, a rigid flow might uh, end up in, uh, you know, user abandoning things. Similarly, aesthetics and minimal design so uh, uh, color combinations uh, and the visual appeal uh, a very nice minimal design so that you no know, user doesn't get distracted just get things done and go they should they would definitely love that kind of product and then comes you know recognizing uh, you know helping the user to recognizing the errors uh, diagnose it and then recover from it so let's consider the example of you know um, a user ordering for a product um, and checking out while checking out uh, you know he may have entered the quantity uh, more than the available now it's not his fault actually uh, so but there should be a clear message given that you know uh, the order quantity can only be five, but user mode have entered seven. So the message should be clear, and they should be able to uh, dismiss that message and immediately click and change there itself and then proceed. Instead, if this goes to a different page uh, displaying the error, and user has to do the entire thing of adding the product and you know coming out to the checkout is going to annoy too much and finally error prevention so in the first place itself in the given previous example user should be actually prevented rather than allowing them to enter seven it should have already prevented user at that stage where it was clear that it will be only uh, processed five orders, five quantity, then user should never be allowed to enter seven. So a simple error prevention will save a lot rather than you know uh, going to the previous point. So these check these items checklist will help us to actually uh, verify the product for the usability. Okay, now that I have a checklist, uh, I have a clear user journey. So, do I really need to go to end users uh, to do this testing? Yeah, end users doing usability testing with end users is not something we can replace, but doing in house is really going to add more value because you can do it frequently and you can do it. Uh, whenever you want and it's going to be really cost effective so you should have a clear way to quantify the uh, outputs uh, at sushi we use a usability scorecard um, specifically created for uh, each product so that we will be able to you know understand the usability uh, index of the product at any point of time and see how we can improve and where we are lagging uh, the example 
uh, one shown here uh, was actually considering a product that was migrating from legacy system to uh, uh, web application. Uh, the legacy system was used by the end users for you know almost uh, 20 years. So moving from the legacy to web, uh, user would have had a lot of questions and confusions, but that has to be minimized. Uh, to have a seamless experience for the end user moving from legacy to the um, new digital website. So usability was a, one of the key aspects that we had to look at and we had designed uh, uh, based on the user journeys that uh, had been mapped. We had designed a checklist and questionnaires and based on the, those checklists and questionnaires, we arrived on this usability scorecard uh, the parameters considered for this, uh, for that product was uh, portability, accessibility, identifiability, navigation, and content. So um, this score, uh, this test was taken again and again after iterations and see how things can be improved. So accessibility was taken care in the initial stage, but portability and uh, identifiability was lagging behind. So uh, it gives a clear indication to the uh, uh, you know, engineering team what has to be taken care of with respect to usability. So with this, I would, uh, I'm concluding this uh, session uh, saying like usability testing is not a one-time activity and uh, it doesn't always need to be actually done by the end users. Uh, doing with uh, real end users is going to uh, take a lot of effort uh, and also it's going to be, uh, you know, a costly exercise. If not done properly, the results may be screwed up and, uh, you know, we won't realize the ROA effort. So, uh, doing out in-house, doing it in-house is going to be uh, effective. So, if if we take a proper approach. So, as as I mentioned, bringing a proper usability uh, user journey in the first place and then uh, having a proper checklist and questionnaire guidelines that a user take and bringing a sample engineer who can uh, do this. Uh, the same engineer cannot do, but you know, uh, in-house itself, you can find different people to do this and rate the usability of the product for each iteration so that you can see improving from the aspects. So um, usability is not just something that has to be done with end users. It can also be done as a part of your SDLC lifecycle with the internal engineering team with right proper understanding of what is our goals and how we are going to do it and how we are going to track it. So um, I hand it over back to Lini for Q and A session. Thank you, Sujata. Uh, that was a very informative session, and uh, I'm sure it was worth the time of our audience. So yeah, is the Q and A um, R, and um, I request our uh, audience to please uh, continue to uh, throw their questions here in the chat box. Uh, we have a couple of questions here, so I'll be taking uh, them one by one. So, Sujato, so there is a question from Nitish Kaushik. I think you almost answered it towards the end of the session. Uh, his question was how usability can be uh, then more in-house as it requires large number of different minds. So yeah, you told what the right, uh, you know, uh, approach, uh, the guidelines that you described and uh, with the right approach, it can be done, uh, how it can be, you know, properly done uh, in-house. So uh, the next question is how is, uh, is accessibility testing different from usability testing and uh, how it is different? Okay, um, so accessibility testing. Okay, accessibility testing, uh, I would rather say it's uh, 
uh, it's part of usability testing uh, where it mainly focus on how easy is, is it for the end user to access uh, access things uh, buttons or anything on the uh, application um, you know i can give an, you know, a very good example um, i'm a great user of you know go to meeting i hope most of you would have been using it uh, i i mostly use it on my mobile um, so there is a commuter mode on go to meeting app um, uh, there are a lot of people who use to join the meetings through go to meeting app from the mobile when they are actually driving to or back from the office so it saves time uh, so if there wasn't a commuter mode then mute and unmute would be really difficult and you know um, you know it may lead to accidents while they are driving because they have to actually look at the app find the mute unmute button which would have been very small in the normal mode but in commuter mode you don't have anything just anyway click on the screen it just mutes or unmutes it just toggles between so that is what i call as accessibility um, and more to it uh, to add more to it uh, with respect to mobile application uh, most of them tend to use with one hand and uh, and we all use when using it one hand it will be the thumb which is reaching out for uh, the buttons and clicking that means it should be accessible to the thumb so uh, far on the top may not be accessible so everything has to fall in the radius where the thumb can reach so this can be tested testing these type of things is called um, accessibility testing so this is part of usability testing yeah thank you Sujata. so there's another question uh, that um, uh, our audience has asked can you please explain the difference between ui and ux again i think there was a slight uh, problem with the audience uh, audio at the start of this webinar and uh, that's why we have this question so can you please explain it once again Sujata? sure so um, as I mentioned earlier, UI and UX are two different things. So uh, UI is more looking at the visual aspect, uh, technology perspective. So it's, it's, uh, it's more about the uh, visible things on the screen that user, you know, click, interact with, um, you know, uh, the pages, the buttons, screens, uh, images, um, and the color of it all these things so it's more on the screen elements and uh, things that they actually interact with whereas ux is on the other hand it's more towards the emotions and feelings of the users so how the user will feel when they actually interact with something on the screen uh, how user is going to uh, feel when they you know interact with the product it's it's not just one button or one screen it's it's actually going to consider the flow so um, uh, ui is more on you know uh, technology where ux is more on the emotions and feelings that's why i said you know you can have a very delicious food which is you know uh, taking care of uh, users feel um, uh, thing but if it is served on a dirty unclean table then nobody is going to touch it so uh, however good it is it has to be presented well that is ui whereas you know you have a nice canvas and a painter is you know just throwing uh, colors without even thinking what he wants to paint and you know or randomly a uh, musician uh, you know uh, punching the keyboard key is not going to actually you know um, give the user a good experience so you have to go with the flow and do a nice uh, music for the audience to enjoy so just jamming in a keys is not going to give them the experience so UX is more on experience and UI is more on the visual elements. Okay, so 
were good examples quoted. Um, and um, I'm, I'm clubbing two questions here. Um, there are two similar kind of questions. Uh, one person is asking, can you give an example of a key change that came out of your UX intervention in an app that is already live? And uh, another person has asked how Zuchi systems uh, would approach usability testing for an application that is already live. So these are kind of connected. So I just clubbed them both. Awesome. Um, this, uh, this is actually a good question because uh, all this webinar was more looking at uh, from the scratch product. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is a very nice question. Um, so uh, uh, when the product is already live, that means uh, user is already using it. So you may not have the liberty of uh, doing a, a very rigorous usability testing maybe there is a very high chance that you know um, a proper user journey might not have been mapped at the beginning of the product designing even before the product designing stage so uh, testing that kind of app is still feasible there are a lot of tools that are going to help us in you know uh, getting user feedback so uh, you can get um, inputs through user surveys user feedbacks uh, most of the application you will see so they they ask you to rate uh, they throw in some polls uh, or survey questions uh, and also there are uh, tools you know um, like application performance monitoring tools there are uh, tools that monitor user interactions which can give you uh, proper uh, metrics with that you can uh, you know get a actionable uh, you know feedback uh, so uh, optimizely uh, app loss uh, kind of uh, tools actually help you to do that so uh, but this requires a good analysis uh, so usability testing is one one uh, one part of it so uh, still you may have to go through in identifying the persona and getting the feedback to do it in-house and if you want to collect from the uh, real-time users you also have tools to do that so uh, it has to be done in combination where you have to do the reverse engineering you have to go back to the basics of you know identifying the user journeys and coming back to the question so that you can continuously do it in-house on the other hand, you are you also parallelly uh, get tools that can actually um, you know help you to collect metrics that can help you to identify the usability gaps. So both together can help uh, you to test the usability of an application which is already in life. Okay, so uh, the next question is: How was usability testing measured? Are there any metrics? Okay, um, I think uh, the last scorecard that we uh, showed is something that we have developed uh, in-house for um, you know our customers. Uh, there is no standard set of uh, scorecards or metrics, uh, but definitely uh, uh, the questionnaires that we identify and the weightage we give based on the user journeys that we have already thought about, the personas, uh, all these things you uh, one can come up with a scorecard on different aspects of the usability uh, and the areas that we are testing and hence you can get a uh, you know real time metrics to measure the usability but uh, as such there is no standard uh, formula or standard uh, um, uh, metrics there okay and um... Another question we have is, what is the ideal number of people required for a moderated usability testing? Okay, moderated usability testing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's more of something that uh, happens uh, typically in the early stage of the product. And uh, ideal number, um, you know, uh, depends on the type of product and uh, uh, also depends on the uh, type of different personas involved there. Uh, so even in uh, 
different uh, personas you can categorize and you know you can have a different sample set so uh, anywhere between 10 to 15 uh, uh, would be a nice number to have more than that uh, you know organizing a moderated uh, in in house is also going to be the challenging so uh, you cannot have a vast sample at the same time uh, a very less sample means you are going to miss out um, the actual users whom you are intending so you have to balance out between both so uh, it depends on product to product but uh, i have seen in most cases uh, somewhere between 10 to 15 should be a manageable number and a uh, good sampling technique will actually help in here uh, one last question that I would be taking here is: uh, uh, Can eye tracking, eye tracking, be done with masses? Uh, it could be a violation to privacy of users, and doing it in in-house won't yield required results. Okay, eye eye tracking. I don't think it can be done with a huge mass, and uh, uh, it has to be taken in con. Uh, the end user taking it has to actually accept to do that uh, because it requires a specific device uh, to track monitor their um, you know eyeball movements so uh, definitely without getting a person's concern uh, we can't do that testing so uh, it cannot be done for Marses but you know you don't need to have them in person to do this but yeah uh, you can have limited number of people uh and only people who volunteer for that can only be taken so uh, it cannot be done as masses because uh you know keystroke uh can be you know done for masses because you can actually collect where they are clicking uh, but uh, eye tracking is not like that so it requires specific devices also so um it has to be taken in concern with the uh you know audience participating there uh okay so um Sujata, we have a very uh, active audience today there are questions coming in um maybe one last question what are the key major things as a tester we should take care as per usability perspective uh Do you want me so, to reach? no i get that okay. so you actually have to go back to the um you know uh, checklist that uh, we were going through uh, uh, as a tester if you want to take care of usability in your product um, maybe i would refer i would ask you to refer back to the checklist that we had put out uh, those are very generic things uh, you have to relate it to the product uh, like um, you know uh, error prevention uh, recognizing error uh, help uh, documentation availability uh, status visible status of uh, things uh, uh, actions uh, consistency between uh, different product uh, uh, even uh, within the product suit uh, the naming terminology everything uh, and you know uh, flexibility of moving back and forth all these things if you are going to look at um, then you will be covering at least a good amount of usability aspects uh, when you are testing a product. Yeah, fair enough, Sujata. Thank you um, uh, to all the wonderful audience that we had today. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, there are a couple of questions more, uh, but uh, I see that uh, those questions are almost answered in the presentation. So. If for some reason you are not able to, you know, uh, hear us at any point of time and we were not audible, uh, maybe that is the reason that these questions are repeated, I believe. Uh, so we would be sharing the recorded version of our webinar to all of you. Uh, so I think your questions will be answered there. But if, uh, if at all, any questions are unanswered and if you would want, um, you know, our uh, speaker Sujata to answer any of your question please feel free to write to us at the email id in this screen that you see sales at sushisystems.com so thanks a lot thanks a lot for the time that you dedicated for the webinar today
we'll have more webinars coming up from Sushi Systems. Stay tuned and uh, stay home, stay safe. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Stay safe.